Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Today we are working on the Scottish Claymore, as you are well aware, and this is going to be a hell of a tiring day. I'm going to learn a lot, that is for sure. And speaking of learning a lot, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. They're bringing us this video. Skillshare is the online learning platform with more than 17,000 thousand online courses in videography, photography, business, marketing, all that fun stuff. Premium membership starts at $10 a month for the first 700 of you to click the link in the description below. I'm going to get yourselves an exclusive free trial. That's right. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight down to it. I'm going to be in the grinding room all day. Woo we have a lot of work to do. is I'm trying to straighten things out. As you saw in the last episode, it's still got a little bit of a wiggle and as best as possible, since that edge is about an eighth of an inch thick, I'm looking down it, which helps me uh, be able to, I don't know exactly the best way to describe it. There's a, there's a technical term for it, for when you look down a long piece, uh, a long length of something, and you can then a lot more clearly see the wiggles in it. I think it's something about shortening the uh, perspective of the length, then means that the proportion of the wiggle increases compared to, I don't know, who knows? But what I do know is when I hold it up like this, I can see that right here, for example, is a wiggle, and I'm gonna grind out that wiggle. Though the blade has been tempered, it's extremely hard. And though we're using ceramic abrasives, they really don't like to cut, especially if there's not enough, like, uh, if there's not enough pounds per square inch of pressure on it. It wants to cut only if there's a tiny bit of steel that it's cutting at a time, or you've got extraordinary pressure. You can see here, I've got now two chamfers there. This wiggle means that I need to remove material on this side. I'm not following the bevel straight away. Instead, I'm coming in at an aggressive angle. I'm doing my heavy stock removal, and then then I flatten it off, that reduces my surface area contact for the stock removal and in turn makes it easier to flatten off and in turn helps the process go easier. When you've got a hard blade, it's super, super difficult to do all the stock removal you need. So I always have found it very easy or a very helpful to reduce that surface area contact. And that goes all the way back to learning about blacksmithing with Brown Brazil, where the most taught concept was that of reducing our surface area contact with a hammer or with an anvil to move the metal faster applies here at the grinder too. as much of the wiggle ground out of there as I can, which means that I have thick and thin areas, but it's still largely very thick. We've got a lot of material to remove. I'm now gonna work across the whole length, back and forth, start at an aggressive angle, bring it more acute, start bringing this edge down in thickness. <laughs>
So, that blade, oh, I have spent so much time in the grinding room, and that is, that is backbreaking work. But, what we have achieved is we have a hot tang, but a 60 grit finish on the blade, and a 400 grit finish within the fuller groove. Wow. And I'm shocked, because this thing weighs like practically nothing right now, and it was not long ago that this thing was extraordinarily heavy. This is now a light, whippy, flexible, Ah, it's, this thing is unbelievable. So, I've missed forging. I've been grinding all this time, heat treating. I've missed forging. And so we're gonna do some forging. The guard on a Scottish Claymore is really, really rather special. And what I think makes it special is something that I wanna try and add onto this, which is not only does the guard come out crossways from the blade, but the guard will often have a protrusion that lays over the beginning of the blade like this on either side of the blade. And I think that this is gonna be a wonderfully challenging shape to try and make. So the forge is hot, and we're gonna take some steel, and we're gonna start moving it around. Oakley dogly, so I'm gonna throw this piece of steel in there. This is another piece of one by three inch flat stock. Same thing, we made our straightening, tempering jig out of yesterday. It happened to be handy. I think this is gonna be helpful for our guard. And in true Alex Steel fashion, we're gonna forge a thick and grind a thin. So I'm gonna take plenty of material. This is about two and three quarter inches of the stuff. And now we wait. Okie dokie, and with the magic of editing, we're in the forge and ready to start forging. is now a rough now this is a piece of mild steel and my hope is to leave it as nice and kind of as forged as possible. However, I'm a little worried that the proportions here aren't quite right. I think it's a little wide and I think I forged out the sides of it just a little too far. It's about 14 inches wide. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, this will potentially be a prototype run of the guard. I'm really, really pleased and excited with the process that I used to forge this. It went really well, tried something new, taking that piece of flat stock, working it there underneath flat dies to make this three prong shape. Had to trim a little bit off, but I'm pleased with the forging process. I've just got to refine it to get the shape that I want so that we can forge it actually a little bit closer to the finished size. And of course, guys, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare, where you can learn all about videography, you can learn about editing, you can learn about photography, illustration, all of these wonderful things on their e-learning platform. 17,000 courses and you can get access to them with their premium membership that starts at only $10. But if you're one of the first seven to click the link in the description below. Because they're sponsoring today's video, they are giving you guys an exclusive free trial so you can access the entire library. You can learn and soak up information that all their teachers are teaching. You can learn how to run this type of camera. This is a Panasonic GH5. Edit videos, put it 
all together and potentially start building your own YouTube channel. Remember that link is in the description below. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Thank you to those of you that go and start learning on Skillshare. I will see you guys on, uh, on tomorrow's video as we keep cracking on the Scottish Claymore. What a fun project it is and what a thrill it is to be able to bring you along the way. Thank you for watching.